Welcome everybody, this is Mr. Maestas, and I'm here and we're gonna talk about hashtag who's the fastest. We're doing um, a paired t-test uh, for uh, two sample means. So uh, this is uh, statistics, uh, obviously, and I'm gonna be talking about some characters, some really, really fast characters here. So here's my uh, context <clears throat> that we'll talk about here. Um, Velocity 10, the super fast super supplement. So the Super Institute for Super Advancement, uh, made up of, you know, ma made by me entirely, I, that's not a real place, uh, has developed a new supplement that they claim will make speedsters faster. So to test the new supplement, they've gathered 10 of the fastest characters in the known universes to try to supplement, um, to try that supplement that the CISA calls Velocity 10. The speedsters are asked to run 100 miles and take the time in seconds um, then do the same after taking Velocity 10. Here are the results. So with um, no Velocity 10, we have um, Superman, Sonic, um, who did I say was SG? SG is Speedy Gonzalez. And we have the Roadrunner, Flash, Quicksilver, Dash, Zoom, um, Rainbow Flash, and uh, Lightning McQueen and Turbo. And so they all take the supplement. They've run 100 miles, and this is how fast they ran in seconds. All right. I'm not sure Lightning McQueen can do 100 miles in 9.1 seconds, but that would be pretty pretty cool. Um, and then with velocity 10 in seconds, okay? So is there evidence that the velocity 10 in fact reduces their 100 mile times and makes the speedsters faster? Well, what we're doing here, you see that we have a, um, you know, we have two samples here, right? They took it once with the velocity 10 and then they did it again without the, or sorry, without the velocity 10, and then again with the velocity 10. However, these are not independent times because the same people are running the same distances, right? So since we have the same people, these two times are dependent upon who, you know, who ran the race. So we're not doing an independent two samples t-test. We're doing what we call a paired t-test. All right, so I'm gonna run through this example and tell you what we're gonna do with a pair t-test. Now for a pair t-test, what we're really interested in is, um, do these differences make them faster? <clears throat> so are the differences, are their times dropping really, right? Because if they drop, if the times are dropped, like right here, you know, um, Speedy Gonzalez, he, he dropped his time, which means that the velocity 10 might have worked on him so what we're going to do is we're going to find a new little new column here or actually this is a row d for difference okay and we're going to subtract and in my difference i'm going to subtract um we're going to subtract let's call the x 10 and x n 10 okay and we're going to subtract so we're going to say d is going to be the difference between x 10 minus without <clears throat> so we're going to go uh, after minus before okay so we're going to go 8.5 minus 8.2 and we're going to get 0 0.3 and we're just going to keep subtracting all the way down the line all right so i'm going to go and fill these in 0 0.2 negative 0 0.1 that's good negative means that they reduced their time so don't be afraid of a negative in a um, paired t-test sometimes we're going to end up with negatives which in this case would be good because it means that their time dropped okay that's just zero negative 0 0.08 and negative 0 0.16 so now what i'm going to do for a pair of t tests is i'm really interested in this right here in d and i'm really interested in really i'm interested in d bar i'm really interested to see if the average difference the average difference was negative. Because if the average dis difference was negative, then that means that in, in a on average, the velocity 10 you know, made them drop their speed. So that's what I'm really gonna test. I'm testing this. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna now do a one sample t-test. But I'm gonna do that one sample t-test on D. Okay, so, um, here are some, uh, but everything, all the formulas stay the same, 
as we did in the one sample t-test. So all we're doing is we're applying it to D. So let's go in and do my hypothesis test. So my null hypothesis is going to be that D sometimes for, because we have, we want to have a, um, a population parameter, right? So a lot of times in some books they use delta, like this little delta here. Um, D is equal to zero, meaning if there were no, there would be no change, right? If the difference, the average distance would be zero. No change, remember, is what our null hypothesis. Our alternative hypothesis would be that D is less than zero, right? And delta is going to be the um, the average distant, the average width velocity 10 minus the average without velocity 10, right? Um, sigma 10 minus sigma not 10. That's what the difference is. And if the difference is negative, then that means that the um, the after effect dropped their you know their their time dropped so this is what i'm trying to test okay so now uh what are our what are our conditions because remember we got to do conditions so our conditions are the same for one sample t-test the first thing is are these chosen at random well we're just going to assume that these are representative of all the speedsters okay so um we're going to say these uh were chosen at random I probably should have put that in the problem. Sorry about my chicken scratch handwriting on this thing. Um, number two would be that they are less than 10% of all speedsters. We're just going to assume in the known universes that there are more than uh, you know a uh, hundred and you know more than a hundred speedsters. Okay, so um, there. Let's write this. Um, these speedsters are less than 10% of all speedsters. Okay, now I want to check what's my third check on a one sample t test is nearly normal. So what am I checking that's nearly normal? Am I checking um, both of these um, distributions for no V10 and with V10 to be nearly normal? No, we're not. We're checking D because D is what we're looking at. So um, I put these in my calculator. So I have um, no V10 here, V10 here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to write, um, this is going to be the difference. So diff. And right there, here in this little box, I'm going to say enter. And that's going to be V10 minus, oh, come on. How come you didn't recognize it? All right. For some reason, it is not recognizing V10. V10 minus. See how that one got bold? I don't know why this one's not going bold. Let me let me check it out for a second. I'll come right back. All right. So for some reason I had it wasn't working with V10, so I just changed it to with V10. So I do with V10 minus V10 in this little here, and it's going to do all the differences here. All right. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to check my distribution. So uh, I'm going to add a new. Come on, add a new page here. Check my distribution of difference. And it looks all right. You know, not too bad. Let's change it to a box plot and see. Um, it's a little skewed, but I think for our purposes, this will be okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, um, and go ahead with our test. All right. So we would normally we would just draw this picture right here. So we would take... Um, Sorry, my computer is just being... Okay, so we take this picture and we would um, put it in our... We would just draw it right here, right? All right, 
So there's our nearly normal condition. Okay, so now we're going to run the rest of our test, and we're going to run it just like we did a normal t-test. Um, so we're going to take and find our mechanics. And we're going to do that by doing our t value. So our t for the difference, how many degrees of freedom? So we're going to use our d. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So n equals 11 means the degrees of freedom is equal to 10. It's n minus 1. All right, degrees of freedom equals n minus 1. So with 10 degrees of freedom, I'm going to have um, my, I need my d bar, right? So I need my mean of that. So I go back to my calculator and I figure that out. So let's run some, you know, the easiest way to do this, guys, is to run your test in here. So go ahead and do um, statistics, stat test, t test, and we've got data. And this time we're going to use, so our null hypothesis is that it's equal to zero, right? Our difference is equal to zero. Our list is going to be our differences. And our null, remember, was that we were less than that. Okay, we'll go and put that. We'll shade our p-value so we can see what it looks like. And that's what we end up with. So did we say less than zero? We must have. Um, <clears throat> so we get a p-value of 0.18 and a t-score of negative 0.95. So if you want, you can come back here, and it'll uh, give you all of your uh, pertinent information here somewhere uh, it's not big enough for me to see it uh, but we'll have all the information so what we want to do is we want to basically take this picture and get it on our paper okay so I'm gonna go and just take this picture and I'm gonna I know you guys can't do this but you'll draw it on your paper all right and this is uh, basically our mechanics for this a lot of times on the AP exam They'll really give you, uh, they'll give you the information on, uh, on a computer output, and then they'll ask you to, you know, using the t-score and the p-value, what, uh, what do you say? Okay, so now we're going to go, go ahead in our conclusion. I'm running through this really fast because I'm trying to get through the whole thing, but if you want to know how to run a one-sample t-test, go back to my previous video with one sample t-test and I show you all the work that's involved in doing like all the all the um, by hand mechanics so conclusion um, since the p-value is small nope sorry larger than 0 0.05 which can be our alpha and our p-value is right here 0.118 we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There is no evidence that V10 makes speedsters faster. You might want to also say that there's no evidence that the average um, difference of their speed goes down um, after taking V10. That's a little bit more appropriate. Now, if you are looking for a confidence interval, I'm just going to kind of gloss over it, um, give you the formula for it. But it's D bar plus or minus T star degrees of freedom times the standard error of D bar. And really, this is, guys, you're just doing the same thing. Sorry about that. That's my bell here. Um, you're doing the exact same thing that you did for a one-sample t-test for pair test, only you're doing it with the difference. Okay? That's it. That's the only, that's the only change. So um, I think you guys are set. It's really not that much different than what we've done before. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to ask. Um, I'll try to put up another reel at some point, sometime. I'm finding the confidence interval for this. Uh, but again, if you want, just go back and watch my one sample t-test video and my confidence interval video on that. And it should, you know, it's really just that only using D. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining me this time. We'll talk to you later. Bye.